So now you know how CSS variables work, how you can write them. Let's go look at an example of them in action in a more realistic project. Okay guys, welcome to this video. We're going to be looking at this pricing table I made. I'm not going to be coding out the whole pricing table. If you want to see how I created this, uh, you can check out the code pen. The link for it is down below. Instead, I just want to be focusing on really the practical value of using it in your projects. So the reason that this is super, super useful is that by containing all of my variables here, what happens is when I have a bigger file like this one, where it goes on and on and on and on, and there's lots of stuff in here, I have all of my different things set up, but my variables let me keep all of the controls for my site in one spot. So once I've actually styled my whole site, now I can come in here and this one place has all the controls on pretty much what's going on. So here where my font family is, if I want to change my font family, I could change it here. Um, as far as my naming conventions go, FF is for font family. If I had different ones, I could have a font family um, primary and secondary, or I could have just a font family serif and saw serif, whatever you want. Um, FW's font weight, so font weight normal, font weight medium, font weight bold, and I have my weights there. For my font sizes, normally I'd have more than just three because I'd have, um, and this can be body instead of paragraph, but I'd have like font size one for my H1, two for my H2, which is this, uh, three for my H3, which in this case I'm using on my prices, paragraph, and you, you get the idea I think for that. I have my colors set up, so primary color, secondary, I have a light and dark version of my secondary, um, and accent, I don't even think I'm using the secondary anywhere on here. I'm not, look at that. Um, I have a spacer one, so my spacer is what's controlling most of my space. Um, I also have a medium and large spacer, and I'm going to talk about this in a second. And then I have my shadow that's used on my cards right now and BR stands for border radius so that's um, if I came in here and just changed that to 25 it's going to change the border radius here and on my buttons so you can see it's changing it on multiple things at once so it keeps my border radius is nice and consistent throughout my whole site um, yeah so that's what the border radius is for um, so just to show you how this is controlling things here on my primary color, if I were to come and change this to red, you can see that it's affected most of my site. So again, I can control things really, really well just through coming in here. I wanna change how my spacing works on my site. I need a little bit more space everywhere, 1.5. Everything's gonna get a bit bigger because I'm also, my spacers are being used in my padding, so it's affecting um, the spacing on things a little bit. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. Um, but it's also affecting these spaces. You can see I also have a spacing medium and large. And what I've done is I want my medium one to always be twice the size as my other one. So I'm using the calc. I'm putting in my variable spacer, but I'm multiplying it by two. And my large spacer is being multiplied by three. So if I were to change this one, that's controlling this space that we see here. So if I were to shrink that down, you can see that these spaces are getting smaller. And if I do that all the way to one, Again, it shrinks the whole thing down. So that's controlling. Um, and that way, by changing this one thing, it's actually affecting all three of these at the same time, which is really cool. Um, just really quickly, one thing I did, and I think I mentioned earlier that there is sometimes a useful case for overwriting your variables inside of selectors instead of having it up in the root. So here I have my primary color, which is this darkish blue color. So if we look at how I wrote my CSS here and we come down to my uh, cards, um, my card title has a background of primary color. So this is the title here, it has that background color. Um, my card price is the primary color, has that color. And uh, my button, which is somewhere else, also is using that color uh, card uh, button background is primary color so the advantage with this is when I change my primary color all of them are changing but then I have this uh, this set here which is my sort of the one that I'm trying to highlight this is the package that I really want to sell right so if we look here in my uh, markup we have my card then we have another card, and then I have my third card. So one, two, three. But my second card, this middle card, is an important card. 
the card important. So this is the more important card and I wanted to change the colors in it. Now I don't want to have to go through and redefine all of my colors throughout the whole thing. I don't want to have to say card important, card title, card important, card price, card important, card body, etc, etc to change the colors. So what this lets me do is if I come and I look, I have my card important I've redefined what primary color is. I've changed primary color to my accent color. So that means I don't have to change anything. One line of CSS changes it all. So if I take this off, it's gonna go back and they're all gonna look the same now because these are all using the card and inside of my card, my pricing, all of those things are set up to be using a primary color and so primary color is working fine, it's getting it from the root. And if I come here and I redefine it here, whoops, just undo, I redefine my primary color, it's changing what it is in that one. So this is also, if I had three, I could have card important, and let's just say um, card very important. And we do card very important. And on there, I could say that the primary color is var uh, secondary color, which won't really be the best color to use. Don't I have a secondary color? Whoops, I forgot my period. There we go. And now it's changed that one. So it's a nice, easy way to change colors on a system that's already existing um, and to come up with some theming options and stuff like that. So this is the one time where I'd be looking at actually using it and redefining variables. I think in a case like this, it actually makes sense to do it like that. Um, but do be careful with stuff like this. Um, but again, you're just going to be coming through and writing your CSS like you normally would. There's nothing that's too fancy, nothing that you want to change around too much. Um, but basically, you're just going through and setting all the things up that you normally would. But whenever there's anything that's repeating, so my background color, my colors are always going to be repeating, bring them up and make a variable. Your font sizes, um, your spacing issues, your radi border radiuses, your shadows, if you have gradients, anything like that. And then it gives you full control over the site in one big area right at the top of your style sheet, which is just amazing and makes it really easy then to make modifications. So there we go. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment down below to let me know. Or if you have any questions, please don't be shy. Leave a comment down below. I love having discussions with you guys down there. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing so you can get videos like this every single week. In the next video, I'm going to look at how CSS variables differ from SAS variables and that using them in media queries is just amazing. It's, it's literally a chain. It can change the way you're working. Uh, they, they're just amazing in media queries. And don't forget, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.